I cannot believe this. I am in a state of shock right now. You guys are not going to believe Joshua Chapter Guy's news that he has just announced. Wow. Where do we start? It is currently 2am here in the UK and I've just found out about this news that Joshua has in fact decided to drop out of the 5000 meters for the Olympic final. I can't believe it. Now one of the main reasons Joshua did this was because he has in fact got too fatigued from the 10,000 meter race days before. This is something I brought up when many athletes enter more than one event they are stretching themselves way too thin. Today I'm going to be reacting to an article. This article is very interesting and goes into the details of Joshua Cheptegei and some of his past races and why he has dropped out of the Olympic final. I truly believe that he knows he will not win gold so therefore he has decided not to bother racing otherwise he possibly may humiliate himself. What you need to know. Uganda will reportedly request the Olympics committee to strike the distance runner's name off the start list on Monday. The newly crowned 10,000 meter Olympic champion Joshua Kipkurui Cheptegei may not be available to defend the 5,000 meter title he took at the Tokyo Games in Japan three years ago after he requested not to take part in the forthcoming race. Now on the what you need to know section the bit I don't understand here is what if the Olympics committee don't strike his name off then will it just go down as a DNS? Like does he have to start the race if they refuse to strike him off? Do you guys know? Comment down below and let me know because I've heard of some races where the athletes had to run the race but they didn't want to so one of the athletes was Bernabad I believe the French athlete he had to run a 3k race and they forced him to run it so he just ran the first 200 meters and then dropped out after that so technically he still ran the race but it was just a dnf so yeah, kind of a smart way of doing it but i don't think joshua would bother towing the line because it would be televised to millions of people and if he dropped out it would look stupid it would look worse than him just not turning up Reliable sources who spoke to Monitor from the French capital Paris on Monday afternoon said the global superstar suffered an injury to his shoulder on Friday night after the 10,000 meter race and has not had preparation sessions since Saturday. Okay, that's interesting. I've not heard that before. Have any of you guys heard about that? That apparently Joshua Cheptegei uh, sustained a shoulder injury now this is rather unusual because I've not heard about this before and I was just wondering how Joshua could have got a shoulder injury while running in the 10,000 meters. Maybe he was shoulder barged or lots of jostling uh, occurred but even with a shoulder injury it's still possible to run a very fast 5,000 meters. So in my opinion I think that's cover, that's his cover story. And the truth is, he doesn't want to run the 5,000 because he knows he won't win. Now, remember guys, we've got Jakob Ingebrigtsen out for revenge. And some people have said that Jakob purposely lost the 1,500 meters in order to win gold in the 5,000 this year. As he hasn't done that yet at the Olympics. It's a pretty crazy theory. It's a bit, you know, out there, a bit absurd. However, when I look at the photos of Jakob's face on the finish line... I do think that he's not fully trying. It's a weird theory, hear me out, I know you're probably thinking what on earth is the runner on about, but I looked at Jakob's face and he looked completely poker faced and this was like 5 to 10 meters from the finish line. Surely if he was defeated he would have given absolutely everything and his face would be an absolute mess, covered in sweat, grimacing, teeth showing, pain and wrinkles. But he just had a completely blank facial expression. So it was either that he timed it completely wrong and he wasn't expecting them to kick past him last minute or he actually wasn't trying. And I, I, I dare, dare I say this, it's just a speculation, just a theory and an opinion. Okay, I'm not stating this is the facts and this is what happened, but there's a possibility that Jakob was in fact saving himself for the 5,000, even though he ran well under three minutes, 30 seconds, which is still crazy fast. So if you want to take a look at this article, I'll put it down below in the description box so you guys can take a better look at this. Uh, it's not very big, uh, but they have a very interesting section on all sports that I'd highly recommend this particular uh, outlet, which I will link down below if you guys want to all check out their pages on 
they do soccer they do football they do basketball boxing cricket athletics of course our favorite rugby golf and much much more the latest news can be difficult to get hold of as with elite runners they aren't very good at posting to their social media and it tends to be their agents or their running managers which will actually announce the news for them this is why if someone like kipchoge or bekele drops out of marathon we only tend to hear about it hours before the actual marathon is supposed to start this is extremely annoying however it's not our fault as running fans we try everything we can to support the athletes and it's just an issue where they are not posting to social media and instead they're leaving it to their management team which sometimes don't even know what they're doing either. If Chapter Guy's name does not feature in Wednesday's race, it will mirror the 2019 World Championships event in Doha, Qatar when he only did the 10,000 meters and brought home gold. So this is interesting, they're referencing the World Champs in 2019. Again, when you try and stretch yourself over two events, it's very difficult. It's not like it's a, uh, you know, country championships or a, you know, like a national champs or a county championships. You know, these are events Joshua could win easily on double double events. However, it's the Olympics. So we're talking the best in the world for every discipline, for every distance. So if you're going to enter more than one distance, you're very, very pushing yourself to humiliation because you could well end up doing really bad in the second event. And this is why I've been worried about is Jakob not doing very well because of some very tough 1500 meter races which he's had to go through. I think a lot of his races so far have been very fast, they've been very stressful and the first heat he ran in the 15 was unintentionally stressful. I mean the guy just ran so clumsy trying to show off to everyone how strong he is and how it's a walk in the park uh, and then in the final he ends up getting defeated. So, you know, it's, it's come back to bite him, I guess you could say karma. You know, when you're the world's greatest, you're going to have confidence, you're going to be cocky, because you deserve to be. You know, Jakob deserves to be overconfident. He is a legend in our sport, a huge legend. However, it does come back to bite you, and when it does, you get humbled, and then you must tone it down on the cockiness, on the overconfidence, Calling the Olympics walk in the park, which he allegedly did according to some news outlets. I've been told that apparently wasn't true. However, I was just reacting to the news outlet and giving my opinions and criticisms. So it's important that we take a look at the Olympics and respect it. It is not a walk in the park for any athlete and is a very serious event. You know guys, the 5000 final coming up in a few days time is going to be very, very fast. I reckon we're going to look at sub 13 for a lot of the field, if not all of it, and the potential for a fast world record time is also there. Please subscribe to my channel to stay updated and I'll catch you tomorrow.